Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com, and today we're going to be going over the lure trap in the Alakine Defense. Last video, we did a trap as black in the Alakine Defense. This is going to be from white's perspective. So it starts out with Pawnee for knight to f6. And then the most common play, which white's going to play, is pawn to e5. Knight comes down here to d5, and then white has lots of different options. You could see things pawn to d4. You could immediately push up here with c4, attacking the knight here. Or many times what I like to play is knight to f3. Usually your opponent is going to play d6. This is the most common line. It attacks this pawn right here on e5, opens up where the light square bishop should be getting involved into the game. Just a lot of things going for black by playing this. Now, white can continue with d4, defending this pawn right here on e5, just solidifying the pawn chain in the center of the board as well. And then bishop to g4. You could see bishop to f5, bishop to g4, pinning down the knight is pretty common as well. Bishop here to e2, stopping that pin from happening. Pawn takes here on e5, and then the knight takes here on e5. I think this is just much better than the pawn taking here, because after knight to c6, attacking the pawn, this knight here on f3 is defending it, but this bishop can just take the knight here on f3, and it's just kind of awkward. So best play, I think, is just take here on e5 with the knight after the bishop takes. Queen takes here on e2. So with any chess opening, in this case, we're playing the Alakine defense, it's always important to understand where your opponent can go, look at different variations, and see if they make a mistake, how can you capitalize? And so this is something in the lore trap where your opponent may not make this mistake, but if it is, I get asked all the time, like, hey, my, my opponent did something, I did not understand what they were doing. How can I actually turn that into a victory? So this is going to be one example of what happens if your opponent thinks they have something where in reality we're going to take advantage of that. And so you have this pawn here on D4. And so they could look at it and say, how do I actually attack this pawn here on D4? One way would be to play knight to b6 there's now a discovered attack with the queen coming down to d4 this would be a very strong move I take this pawn here on d4 get the strongest piece on the board in the center of the action here but we don't really need to worry about that white can just continue with the move castle on the king side and the reason for that is this is a trap because we don't mind if our opponent takes this pawn it is definitely a poison pawn because if they take the pawn here on d4 then we have the move rook to d1 and all is lost so let's take a look at some of the ways that they could try to play from here what's nice is this knight here on e5 or yeah e5 is blocking off some of the squares that the queen would want to go to so it can't stay along this d file it's just going to die to this rook here and so really we're just looking at this fourth rank here as far as where the queen can go and it can't come to uh, b or c4 or g4 that's just going to die to the knight here. And so let's let's take a look at queen to h4. Well, white now has the move bishop to g5. And if they take, well, now white has the sacrifice here, rook to d8. The king has to take, and then knight to f7. King to e8, and then the knight takes the queen here on g5. And this should be a pretty easy victory for white. So, you know, knight to c6. Knight here to e6, this is stopping black. You cannot castle through a check. So this square here on d8 is under attack by the knight. So the king can't go anywhere. It's also threatening this move. Knight takes here on c7. The queen at any time can come up here to h5, attack knight to c3, get the rook involved as well. And you can see it's pretty awkward from black standpoint. Uh, the rook here on h8, how does it really get involved into the game? This bishop here on f8, it can't go anywhere with this pawn moving. So it's going to be looking to push something like pawn to uh, g6. But then it's just pretty awkward as far as how black gets out of this mess. So uh, that is kind of the trap in of a nutshell. There, there's other variations that black can play. You know, they don't have to take that bishop there on g5 they could just say you know queen to b4 
Okay, well now we have the move queen to f3, and this is threatening queen coming up here to f7, and this would be checkmate. And no, it does not stop it if they play pawn to f6. It looks like an extremely strong move. It not only stops the threat immediately of queen takes here on f7, but it also forks both of these squares here on e5 and g5. Unfortunately, that does lose to queen to h5 check. Remember, the king cannot come to the D file because it is under attack from this rook here on D1. So the only move they can play is pawn to G6 to stop it. But then knight takes on G6 and things are all but lost. You know, they can't take with their pawn because that would just be checkmate. And so there, there's just no other moves that they can really make here. As soon as the knight moves anywhere, if it takes up here on H8, um, then there's going to be a discovered attack with the queen, uh, and black's just going to lose too much of material, or they're going to end up losing the entire game. So that was if they move to queen to h4, then we play bishop g5. What if they play something else? Maybe they play queen to c5. Okay, well, now we can play the move pawn to b4, essentially forcing them to come to b4. There's just no other squares they can go to. It comes to b5. We take it with our queen. Can't come to a5. I'm just going to take it with our pawn. Remember, can't stay on this d file. It's going to just take from our rook here. So pretty much have to take the pawn. And then white has the move queen to f3. This is attacking this same square here on f7. It's also attacking the square here on b7, although white's typically not going to be taking this pawn on b7, but it is another threat that they have. And we already have talked about if they play that pawn to f6 move, it's the same threat as before. Queen to h5, pawn to g6, knight takes here on a g6. So that option is not going to work. Now they could try other stuff, maybe knight to a d7 here and says, okay, uh, I need my king to have another outlet. So if we play queen takes here on f7, check. Now they can play king to d8. But then bishop to f4, you can see white's getting all their material involved into the game. They can get their knight involved into the game. Now they can set up with queen to e6. Things get pretty difficult from black here. Neither of their rooks are going to be involved into the game. This bishop here on f8 is not going to be involved into the game. The king is in the center, has no pawns in front of it. Uh, black is definitely going to fall in this position. If we come back and say, okay, what if it doesn't come to c5? What if they just immediately come to b4? Well, as you guessed, we didn't even have to sacrifice a pawn coming up here. We can just play queen to f3. Same thing. Even if they come all the way to a4, we're going to be playing queen to f3 with that threat of queen takes f7. If they ever do move, then we're just going to be playing that queen to h5, forcing them to come here and then taking with our knight here on g6. So that is the lure trap. And that's what happens if your opponent feels like, hey, let's figure out how we can, because this is a pretty normal setup in the Alakine defense. And so if they make a mistake, and they say, oh, let's go ahead and take that pawn right here. Absolutely take that pawn. Nothing to see here. Definitely poisoned. If they take it, you are definitely going to win the game. So that's uh, the lore trap. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I feel like the more that you see these types of videos, it'll just give you a better eye on how you can train your mind to start to look at things and see how you can develop your pieces so that you can have a strong attack and see where the weaknesses are. In this case, you can definitely see it is this D file. So if you can get your rook over here uh, and all the escape squares for the king start to get taken out of the game, you really have a strong attack. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. Now we'll see you guys in the next one.